All right. Just want to make sure this is in focus. Hold on. All right. So if this video goes out of focus at some point in this video, I am still uploading it. I do not care. <laughs> but what's up? It's good, y'all. It's Timmy Lee Glean coming at y'all with another video, and um, you know, I wanna. Uh, so I was juggling back and forth between which topics to speak about and um i want to just go ahead and just do the last topic that i thought of right now honestly i think it's it's vital it's important and this is probably one of the most important ones that i make i believe all these are important you know when i when i look at the topics and in these videos, I'm not creating no notes or anything. I'm just going off the top of the head. Um, beyond when I, whenever I do anything like this, I am going to have notes. And there's going to be videos that I do that's going to be more concise. But in these single father thoughts, this was an old series that I started about, I think, three years ago, almost four years ago. Um, when I first became a single father and I had some thoughts after I started homeschooling my children and learning the difficulties of being a single parent and the hypocrisies that goes on and I feel like the black community that really messed me up and as a single parent I had many things to say and they were disregarded because I wasn't a woman so because I'm a single parent still and do a lot more than a lot of the single mothers that we see nowadays and I'm not saying that a lot of them don't do much but for the simple fact, when you send your children to school already, you're already allowing part of the job to be done by the education system. Whereas myself, I homeschool my children. I've taken on the education of my children myself. Now this is my responsibility, so I'm not going to complain about my responsibility. But that's just a facet that you know I decided to take on. And there's other things as well because I still clean, I still cook. I've become a very good cook, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, so I cook and I clean and I still do my work. And on top of that, I content create and do whatever I can in between to make money. Um, so I do my best as a man and sometimes I feel like I fall short. Um, I teach my children that I'm not a mom. I teach my children that I'm not a woman. And See, when you're a single parent, you're gonna always be at an imbalance. It just seems like one side would never acknowledge it. One side will say they don't need the other one. I'm a man that will openly admit I need a woman. I need one. I need a wife. <laughs> the Most High looked at man and said, he said everything was good. He made the sky, the earth, the, he, he made the seas, he made the mountains, he made the animals, he made everything and said it was good. He looked at Adam by himself and was like, you know what, this ain't good. He needs a help meet suitable. You know, so. <laughs> and I said that in a couple videos already, and it's funny, you know, because it's true. It's true. It's just me being here by myself, I realize it's true. It's just one side is in denial. But when you see the results of children without fathers, when you see the results of these girls without fathers, the results of these weak boys that grow up to weak men without fathers, and it's and it's insane that. A lot of women, single mothers, would raise up the boys into the men that they hate. So you're raising up, and, and a, lot of, a lot of women will complain about these boys that are products of these single mothers. And, um, and I do believe that there are other aspects on the other end that if you do have a single father without a mother there, that there could be issues and nurturement there could be issues and you know i believe connectivity um just with being empathic and things like that but this is why i'm thankful that i have the holy spirit all praises to the most high to be able to do my best in these areas and these avenues but it is so important for us i'm not trying to get on single moms and single dads in this whole thing at all in this in this one but this is to teach well, not even teach. I don't even gotta teach all this. It's just it's science that, and just biology itself is just natural for men and women in our natural role to work together to raise up our families and to build legacy and to you know live life together and to dwell with one another and to 
You know, we want that companionship. It's just some people want that companionship with the wrong people. I'm telling you that the nuclear family and the nuclear, the nuclear family structure is so paramount to society. And the devil is so against it. The enemy of our souls is against that. But the moment that you get a father out of the home, and now you, you just got everybody just doing whatever, you know, naturally women are emotional thinkers. Not to say that they can't have any logic, but many are emotional thinkers, impulsive thinkers, and make impulsive decisions. And many don't think about the children. Whereas the father is looking at the children being like, you know what? If I make this decision in my life, I got to think of the next 10 to 20 years of my children and, and them witnessing this and what would this. And not to say that the other side don't think about this. It's just more in our nature as men to think logically. But sometimes in our logic thinking, logical thinking, sometimes we can be narrow minded and can only see things the way that we're seeing it. Where there's other factors, and I believe that's the beauty in the way that a woman thinks. Where she can take her thoughts, she can take her feelings and her emotions and add them to our sometimes narrow-minded thinking. And she can give us other variables as to, hey, if you do this, what about this? What about that? That's the beauty of a man and a woman working together. You know, but ultimately, if we're doing things in the most highest order, the most high calls men to lead. It doesn't mean that women don't lead in their own life, but when it comes to the overall family, I believe the Most High has the order set that man is to be the head. Man is to be the leader, the priest of his home, and what I believe is even the provider, a sole provider. Now, does that mean that a woman can't work? No, I'm not even saying that. Like, First of all, we live in this nation. <laughs> it's not realistic for a lot of situations to even have a soul provider as a man but I do believe that a man that is a soul provider and has that in his heart even if it's a woman and a man that's working and that and they're working towards him being a soul provider because a lot of people a lot of people don't believe in a man you know in the, in his early stages they don't believe in a man when he don't have enough but you see all these stories about people married 20, 30 years. Yeah, man, I worked five years while we were together and we saved up and we invested in his dreams and this and that and bam. And then he got to have what he needed to invest in his wife. And now his wife can start a business. She don't have to go out in the workforce and work for anybody else. A lot of these dynamics happen where it's like, you know what, baby, we ain't, you ain't gonna work for nobody else. So we, we gonna make sure that we have a plan to get you out of the workforce and to allow me to be able to provide for you so that if you desire to work that you can work for the family because there's something that happens when a woman is going out to work and going out into the workforce and try to have marriage problems and you ever heard of the work husband the work husband is a real thing and it happens a lot in corporate um, it happens a lot, especially with these nurses and things like that. I just saw a video on TikTok. A woman called her husband and said, yeah, I'm going to be working overnight. And the dude right there in his wickedness and his adultery, you know, sitting there recording, like, about to, about to get a hotel with somebody else's wife. And people be having children. It's, it's... The children need to see a man and a woman working together, ultimately. That's pretty much what I'm saying. If the children aren't seeing a man and a woman work together, man, they're always gonna be at an imbalance. My children right now are at an imbalance. I just teach them the best to not be like me. I have to tell my children, you don't want to be like me. You wanna be better than me. You don't want to be a single parent. I have to tell my son that. Cause my son's looking at me as a single parent like a lot of men are not in this position i mean there's more than before more than normal because many women have taken radical feminism to the next level where they really don't have affection for their children a lot of women don't have care for their children so the men are being forced to be the nurturers they're forced to be the ones that are more soft they're forced to be those ones that are but that's outside of the man's natural nature now to be huh, some people don't understand 
when you explain certain stuff <laughs> and I just it's funny while I'm explaining this stuff I just feel the misunderstanding spirit that's gonna come off of people that's not to say that men aren't because the fruits of the spirit gentleness kindness self-control I believe that a man should be that but when a man needs to put his foot down with no compromise it's like especially in the black community it's like men are scared to put their foot down and I believe the issue is growing up in a lot of these single mother homes where the mothers have all this power and they don't have an example of a man or they don't have a man in their life that's gonna be like, hey baby, nah, we ain't doing that. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't have that. So it's the woman telling these boys what to do all the time with no example of a man. Of course, they're gonna grow up into these men that go go towards women that's telling them what to do, that's run, 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 running over their lives, that are like the Ahab spirit to the Jezebel spirit and, and just men that just go for anything they go for whatever type of treatment they go for the smart mouth they, they go for the disrespect they go for the back talking and you know they, they go for you know it's just sometimes you just need to listen like and this might sound like see and a lot of people will probably say it's oppressive and it's not oppressive but sometimes you need to shut your mouth and listen. Because maybe I have something to say that can help us. Maybe I have something to say that can help you. Maybe I have something to say that can help the children. This is why submission is so important. Because if these little girls aren't seeing a woman submit to a man, and like I said, it's not oppressive for a woman to submit to a man. It, it doesn't mean that a woman doesn't have a voice. It doesn't mean that a woman is just a doormat that's being walked all over. It doesn't mean that that, and, and first and foremost, a man that mistreats his wife, the most high, the most high not even gonna answer your prayers as a man. If you're a man that's oppressive, if you're a man that's abusive, if you're a man that's taking advantage of a woman, then your prayers aren't even heard. These children have to see an example of a man that honors his woman yes i use the word honor because quite frankly with hip-hop culture and all that, and it's great because and it'd be the women that love these songs twerking to them and everything disrespecting women you know so it's like when a respectful man is there when a man is is respectful and honoring but he's standing firm and bold you have to realize a lot of women want this kind of man, but they don't want this kind of man. Let me tell you what I mean. <laughs> they will never openly express that they will want a man that will put his foot down and won't let her do whatever she wants and, and won't let her say whatever she wants to you. I know I've been that man and I thought that I was being the best man that I could be because I was, al I was allowing her to just whatever. The more that you do that as a man, the more that she's gonna feel like she can step all over you and walk all over you. And now we got our little boys watching these men getting stepped all over and walked all over instead of putting a foot down and being like, yo, I ain't gonna take this smart talk anymore. I'm not gonna take this back talk anymore. I'm not. And, and if I gotta deal with it or you, you keep on talking to me this way, you keep on disrespecting me, I'm gonna love myself and, and, and freely let, I will let you go with the, with the quickness. If I see that you have that disrespectful Jezebel spirit inside of you, you can get out of my life forever. I will, I will follow you and everything I block. And people think like that's extreme. It is extreme because you know what? Life is too short. And if you don't have somebody in your life, if you don't have a woman in your life that's gonna respect you, and your children don't see respect, leave that woman. I don't, I don't care if you have children with her or anything, leave that woman, leave her. If she can't respect you, leave her. Even if you married, I'm not gonna say divorce her, but leave. If, if, if she can't respect you and she's disrespecting you, causing fights, always always just, 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 just wild. If some women would even try to put their hands on a man, leave that woman, it's abusive. And if, if the shoe was on the other foot, most likely you'd be in jail. And, and as a woman, you, you don't go for no man that's abusive. You don't go for no man that, I'm not talking about that's putting his foot down. Because nowadays, they call masculinity toxic. 
me being a man right now and express, expressing myself as a man because the problem is that these boys aren't seeing men express themselves as men. These little girls don't know what a true man is that's going to stand, stand ten toes down. And I'm telling you that your daughters are more safe with a man that's not going to go for whatever. I'm telling you. When you're raising up these docile, nice guys and these, 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 these weak beta men. I'm telling you, these are the type of men that get walked all over. Not just by their women, by life. Any dude could just come up to, to, and... I just imagine if danger popped up, like danger. I mean, real life danger popped up in your home. Is this the kind of man that will stand right in front? Is this the type of man that will literally sacrifice his life and die just to save the life of his family if he has to? Because if that man don't have that kind of mindset, we gotta raise our boys into being those kind of men, valiant men. That don't mean recklessly throwing yourself out there for a reckless woman, a reckless woman that just puts her man in trouble, that's, that, that flies off with the mouth and just talk to whatever man at the way she wants and then expects her man to defend her and her foolishness. No, I mean that a man that will step in and to protect. That he can be all kind and gentle and all that, but when it comes to protecting, that's when the line comes out. A man that has that line. And once again, that's when you're that kind of man, a woman feels comfortable in her femininity. She feels comfortable in being that feminine woman when you're that man. But if you're not that man, most likely she's going to operate in, a lot of people say survivor mode, that is a real thing. When you as a man are not in your natural nature as a man, then the woman will usurp that authority and step into that role as a man and as a man you are bringing yourself under into submission under the woman that's not the most highest order we seen what happened when adam submitted to his wife look at us as humanity we are we are cursed as humanity because of adam's decision the only and i say the only way is the most high's model we have the most high which is the head of christ Christ, which is the head of man, man, which is the head of woman. Man and woman are over the children. One issue as well, which breaks up families, is when people start having children, they start to put the children above the spouse. The children goes above the spouse. The children are in between the spouse. How did you two come together? Didn't you two have a relationship before the children came about? Didn't you two, wasn't it you two that communicate isn't it you two that comes together and becomes one so how that now when children are to end the equation you two are split in half because you've allowed the children to step in between the structure and the order that the most high has already set this is why lots of families break apart usually once again the man is giving the authority to the woman to be the head of the household and also underlyingly a lot of these men even give the authority to the children to being the heads of the household moms and dads alike and families are breaking up and people don't understand order and structure according to the most highest order and i'm not just talking about the world honestly i'm less so talking about the world this is really a problem in the church this is a problem in the church right now and i would say especially in the black church we don't know nothing about family we don't know nothing about marriage we don't know nothing about raising children up the right way. All the answers are in the Bible. But when you go into church and you're getting a hooping, hollering, uh, you're getting a hooping and hollering and hopping and jumping around and speaking in fake tongues and falling out and just all this stuff and shouting and doing your dance and you're jumping up and down in your cartwheels and you're doing all that for 40, 50 minutes just to get a 10 minute motivational message with with a with, with a prophetic word that you're gonna get your husband yet yeah, it's been 15 20 years you've been going to that church and your husband has came you probably had a couple husbands coming to the church but they didn't agree with the pastor they didn't agree with the message because men like order men like structure so when we are going to a church as men i'm listening to a lot of these videos it, it's crazy because it, it resonates with me so well 
where women of God, so-called women of God, will actually pray for husbands. Husband-type men will come into these churches. They will cross husband-type men. But since they don't, since they're not the criteria that a lot of these people in these churches are, since they don't look like the men in the church um, nowadays, and I'm saying in the black church, it's, it's, it's a lot of men that are like fashionable, but not like, it's, it's nothing wrong to look nice. But when I say fashionable, I mean like, you know, like the, the skin tight suits and skinny jeans and just, you know, it's just like getting their, getting their nails, like getting their nails clipped and stuff like that. And getting their eyebrows like arched and stuff like this this is men that's doing this like these super like super hyper pretty boys and they gotta be six feet tall and make this amount of money and make this amount and do this and it'd be women that will have two three children with another man that will have this expectation It's funny, you really can't talk about this stuff. But at the same time, somebody gotta say this stuff, right? Me being a single father, I know what it feels like to desire a wife and to go into a church like this and go into these settings and you hear that the messages aren't really centered around the word, around growing as a man. And it'd be men that wants to grow as men. They want to grow into like, it's something natural in us if we truly are being drawn by the Holy Spirit. We want to be men. And some of these churches aren't teaching men how to be men. They're not teaching them at all. They're not teaching. There's these messages that cater to the feelings of the woman. It's a ear, it says it in the book of Timothy that they will heap on words that will tickle your ears. They will not, they will not go for sound teaching. They will not go for sound doctrine. They will not go for, and it's, and it's funny, like people would think you're religious. Like, now if you, if you know me personally, and a lot of y'all don't, that's on this YouTube. But if you know me personally, you know I got a sense of humor. You know that I'm actually funny. You know that I'm actually a, a, a great guy, you know, like. I'm actually very kind. I am gentle. I'm but sometimes when people hear your stance on things, as a man, they would equate your stance and they would judge your character and nature off of your stances. They will base your character off of what you stand on, which is simply the word of the most high. Many people say it's chauvinistic. And I will be quick to tell you that a lot of y'all just don't know the most high. These are people that's in this faith. In this faith. And this is what our children gotta see. Our children are seeing these women that are waiting on a husband yet in a secret life they got an old dude that's popping up at night they fornicating she getting pregnant and now he's got pregnant women in the church because they're not speaking against certain sins like fornication sex outside of marriage it's sexual immorality there's so many scriptures on it but when you got a hoop and holler and message you're not going to really hear the word you're not going to really get that convicting message and the holy spirit isn't moving in that in that place you know it's the unhusbanded spirit it's like going into the churches i, sp I spoke about it a couple times like going into the church half naked and just knowing that's a seductive spirit and a lot of women don't understand that they're pushing away a husband this is something that i'm going to speak about in my sabbath message you know, just that Jezebel spirit that pushes away men of God. That how what you're partaking in is pushing away men of God. So now you're living a lifestyle and walking in the ways of Jezebel. And you're pushing away men of God. Yet we're having children, babies still, in the church. 
and then expecting some then expecting these high standards these worldly standards of men yet you just had a baby months ago <laughs> and but you've been in this church for like five years because I'm gonna tell you why this happens because we are men and women. We are naturally attracted to each other. So if you got this brother, first of all, you're not getting a convicting message, so you don't have the renewal of your mind. So now you're, you have the fleshly mind. You're desiring the, desiring the things of the flesh. That's why you have a type. Man and woman. People have a type. This is my type. I like this, I like them brown skin, I like them light skin, I like them this thick, I like them to look like this, I like them to look like that, I like them to be this tall, and I'm telling you, the devil will use your type to waste your time. The devil will use your type to ruin your life. What if the person that's meant for you is four inches shorter than, <laughs> he's still taller than you, but he's just not six feet. He might be like 5'8". Ugh, he's 5'8", ugh. You know, what if the woman that you desire isn't that red bone? What if she's a brown woman? What if she likes her, what if she wears her natural hair? You know? What if she ain't as thick as you want her to be? <laughs> you, know, or, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and ultimately, when we're being conditioned to desire these physical things we're not looking at the inner qualities in people because ultimately if you plan on being married to somebody for 20 30 40 years i'm telling you that body gonna go away you can you can be in shape all you want but after them babies <laughs> after them babies them things gonna sag you know what i'm saying but it, you know what i'm saying but it, it it don't have to be that bad but still the, the things gonna sag you might have a little extra marks on their stomach you know men that being you expect a woman to look a certain way, like, and to be a certain way body-wise. So when she start having the babies, you, it's like, no, where's the friendship at? Because you're going to love that woman um, no matter what her body looks like. Like if, okay, I'm not talking about somebody that's going to let herself go. I'm talking about somebody that just, a lot of men don't like when a woman has, has babies. They don't like stretch marks. They don't like... They want the firmness and it's just like after after babies that that firmness ain't there anymore but you have to accept that and if that's does she having your babies delivering your babies carrying your babies wilding around for nine months with your babies man you better honor that woman i don't care what her body look like after <laughs> honor that woman our little girls gotta see what it looks like for a woman to be honored by a man but culture tells you the nice guys finish last and push these guys away. And I'll tell you why. Because these nice guys are nice guys. Niceness is not a fruit of the spirit, kindness is. When you're nice, you gotta think where it's derived from. To be nice is to be foolish. You're a foolish, gullible man that's able to be walked over. You're a nice guy. That's why people say, oh, Tim, you're not. You're nice. I'm like, I'm not a nice guy. I let people know quick. I'm kind, but I'm not nice. I'll be kind, but I'm not nice. Because the moment you try to raise your voice at me, and I try to talk to you, and you continue to raise your voice at me, I'm cutting you off forever. Oh, that's extreme. Yes, it is extreme. Because life is too short. Too many men are, are going to early graves because of stress. And we deal, especially as black men, we deal with enough stress in this outside world. Why would I want to come home to a war zone? I'd rather be alone. That's the reason that I left, like, the person that I had children with. That's the reason why I left. And then when I left, to try to better myself and better my life, get a, a step by step, got a better job, started making more money, um, started working on my inner quality, started working on myself, self-improvement, and even started to find, started to walk with the most high, started to read scriptures, started to go to church and everything. 
because I was seeking, I was searching the most high. I was, I wanted to improve, I wanted to get better. I wanted to be that family. And I had to realize no matter how much you walk with the most high, no matter how good you do, no matter how much money you make, no matter, you ain't gonna be able to satisfy somebody that don't want a man that's gonna stand firm. They want that, but they don't want that. And there's men out here that don't want a good woman. They want drama. They actually like women that fight with them and argue with them. That's why they still with them. They like toxicity. And there's, there's, there's a lot of women that feel discouraged. I've been seeing it on the internet. It's, it's a lot of women that are of a different nature, modest in nature, modest in apparel, modest. And these women are often ignored or overlooked. And I wouldn't even say ignored. I would say that these women are being protected. They're being protected from, you know, a certain kind of man. The Most High knows who to send together. The Most High knows who's going to truly raise up families together. And like I said, this was supposed to be the last message because this one was less about the children and more about the man and the woman working together to raise the children. The children are vital, the children are our future. And if the children aren't seeing things done the most high way, they're gonna see things done by the world. The devil wants us to be separate. The devil wants mothers to be here and fathers to be here. The devil wants that. And I'm telling you that that's not his order. If you are a woman that says, I don't need a man. In essence, you know, it's good to be independent. But when you're so independent where you can't work with somebody, because I feel like the most efficient form of independence is the type of independence that can come together with another independent being to be interdependent. Interdependence is the most important thing because at this point, you start to depend on each other. A man and a woman comes together and depend on each other. Are there certain things that you, of course, you gotta, you gotta work some things out in yourself, like your own healing journey, your own process, your happiness, like these things should be in the hands of the most high, your relationship with the most high. But when you come together, you gotta depend on each other, you gotta lean on each other. And we have a culture that separated us so much to tell men and men and women we don't need each other. That's from Satan himself. We need each other. But we need each other in our natural nature. Our women need to feel safe. Our women need to be protected. And quite frankly, we got too many weak men out here that's not protecting our women, that's not protecting our children. But also on the other hand, hand there's women that are pushing away men with a lot of these qualities. There's men that want men that they, there's women that want men that they can walk all over, that they can usurp authority and have power over. But when it comes time to protect, this man is running behind his woman. This is real talk. This is real talk. I'll tell I'll tell any man, if you can't fight, take some classes or something. Get armed. Yes, get armed. Get you some. <laughs> Protect your family however you got to. And it isn't just and it isn't just physical protection. Protect your woman's heart. Protect her heart. Allow her to feel safe with you emotionally. That's, that's, that's something else for another day though. <laughs> Ultimately, our children needs to see this. Our children needs to see us become husbands and wives. And like I said, quite frankly, the black community has it a lot less than every other community in America. We're not becoming husbands and wives. 
That's our issue. There's nothing wrong with marriage. There's only something wrong with marriage when we're not doing it the most highest way. But I'm telling you, it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. I've seen the testimonies. If you're doing things the right way, these women are so fulfilled and happy. They're happy. These women are happy. They're happy because they're in their natural nature. They don't have to worry about going out and to the workforce and being tough and rugged and they don't have to worry about being a part of the rat race. Because I'ma tell you, as a single father, doing all this stuff in the house, that's a job in itself. I'll be frustrated too. I do be frustrated because I gotta work and I gotta do all this. <laughs> I've learned to be more content with it. But I just try to imagine a 50-50 relationship, right? And I'm not against that if it's 50-50. But I'm gonna be on the woman's side on this one. Imagine a man and a woman both working. When the man and the woman both get home from work, the woman is now doing the laundry. She's doing the dishes. She's taking care of the children. And she, so she's, she's working and she's doing all this. And the man gets home and he's doing nothing. He hops on the video game. Or he wants to watch a game or drink a beer or something like that. Not to say like, there's nothing wrong with that, do that. But I'm saying if you're in a 50-50 situation, <laughs> you got a 50-50 everything. You got a 50-50 with the children. You got a 50-50 with the baby. You got a 50-50. If you're on 50-50. Ain't no way you got your woman working a job and she coming home and taking care of the house. No, if y'all both working, y'all both should be taking care of the house. But best believe if I'm working solely and you got nothing to worry about, and you can operate and do what you do, best believe, do what you do. And best believe that when I get home, when I get home, it ain't like I'm gonna get home and just, uh, right? no. I gotta have some more left in the tank for my family. Or maybe it's bedtime. Maybe I maybe I work a little late. I want to have some energy for my wife. Even if I'm a little tired. Even if I'm a little like not the spirit of lust. The spirit of lust is heavy in men where they will work all day and just come home and just they'll just want they'll just want sex and then after that it's like then sleep and then wake up for work again and they they do that every day and that point. The marriage is going down the drain and things like that because she don't even feel like she's a person. That's a part of protecting your wife. Well, you're not just treating her like a piece of meat. This is what I mean by honoring your wife. You gotta honor her. The scripture says to love your wife as Christ loved the church and laid his life down for her. As Christ laid his life down for the church, we are to lay our lives down for our wives. We are to love them, we are to honor them, we are to care for them. You know, and there's a high level of, when we say honor, that's a high level of respect for her. But there's too many men that's doing that for women that are disrespecting them as well. And once again, what are our children seeing? What are the children seeing? They have to see a nuclear family structure. Man and woman, in the proper order, working together to raise up the children to care for the household. In my opinion, in my opinion, it seemed to work best when the woman was in the house raising up the children and taking care of the children and taking care of the household without having to worry about working. And the man went out and he was the sole provider and he worked and he did what he had to do to make sure that the wife didn't have to worry about anything. So when she needed to get the groceries to make the meal, that she didn't have to worry about where the money was gonna come from. The money's already there. That when she needs to take the children out to the museum or take the children out somewhere, if you're a homeschool mom, that is, she wants to take the children out. If, if there's a, an emergency and they need to get something, if, and an emergency for the children or just for the house or something that happens, that she doesn't have to worry about the external things out there because the man already got a handle. And that the man can comfortably go out and work 
and not have to worry about how where what what's happening with his children how his children are being cared for because I'm, I'm gonna be honest with y'all like I appreciate individuals in my life for being able to take my children while I go and work but I'm gonna be honest with you there is it's not a level of worry or anything like that but I just feel like I know it'll be different if I didn't have to drop the children off somewhere to go out like I can just leave and then the order that's set in the house can just continue but when I'm taking my children to somebody else's house now my children is under their order and whatever music they listen to and whatever things they watch and however they talk and however they speak and whatever company they have these are things that I'm factoring in that my children are now under this influence they're under this. These are things that I have to worry about as a single father. I don't homeschool my children. I mean, I don't send my children to school, so I don't worry about the school thing, but this is still something like where the most high has allowed me to be able to homeschool my children. Having a wife and just having a structure already. And I believe just the wife that I desire, the kind of wife that I desire, She's gonna know how to do everything that I'm doing better than me. She's gonna be better at organizing. She's gonna be better at cleaning. She's gonna be better at this. And even if she's not, man, she, which I don't know. I believe that there are women that are being raised to be that kind of woman, just like there are men that are being raised to be that kind of man. And, um, you know, ultimately, how are we raising our children? Because when you're raising your children in a single home, a single parent home, there's always going to be something missing. Even if you're doing a great job as a mother or a father, which a lot of mothers, a lot of single single mothers, I will I will give credit to, doing a great job. I'm not going I'm not going to include because the issue is women love to stand up for women so much that women will love to include the terrible women with the good women. I'm not doing that. If you are a terrible mom, if you're not a good mom, if you're not a nurturing mom, if you're not a, a, an attentive mom, if you're not a mom that is going to raise your children up righteously, if you're a heathen mom, I'm not going to include you with the mom that works hard, with the mom that wants to teach her children right, with the mom that does her best to make sure her son at least has a male figure in her life. Um, rather it be a granddad or rather be an uncle or going into church community and, and doing her best to, to be under a word that, that is sound. There's lots of mothers that are led by the Holy Spirit. There's lots of mothers that are doing the best that they can. And I always will have to give my flowers to those mothers. So when I come on here and I say these single father thoughts and a lot of people just think I hate single mothers. A lot of people think I hate black women and stuff like that because I've, I've heard all of this. And you have no idea, I love you way more than all the rappers that you listen to, way more than the entertainers that you watch, way more than even the person that you had your children with. Way more than your mama and your daddy for bringing you the truth. And I'm not, I'm not trying to brag or nothing. But sometimes, especially when you're bringing forth the truth, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, it's, it could be offensive. If you're bringing it from the wrong spirit, but people can be offended even if you're coming from the right spirit. That's one thing that I've learned. What are our children seeing? Because these parents are so selfish and self-centered. Mothers and fathers, they're self-centered. We're always thinking about them and them and them and them and this and that. And I'm just thinking about the children. How does the children feel about this? The stuff that y'all do in front of them, the stuff that y'all say in front of them, the stuff that you say to them, the stuff that you allow in their lives, the stuff that the decisions that you make that affect them every day. Your children, how do your children feel? And eight times out of ten, a lot of these single parents do not care about their children. A lot. I ain't say most. I said a lot. So don't 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 put words in my mouth. I did not say most. I said a lot. Because quite frankly. There are deadbeat fathers. But there's a lot less deadbeat fathers than we think. For instance, I was a man that was not allowed to see my children due to parental alienation and the children being held back from being able to 
And I said, you know what? You wanna, you wanna do this by yourself? Go ahead. I was tired of the abuse. I was tired of the hatred. I was tired of fighting. I was tired of it and I left. And I wanted to just see my children. But you wouldn't let me see the children unless I had to come over your house or be in your face and this and that. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. So since you wanted control and wanted to do things the way that you wanted to do it, the man said, forget it. A lot of men think like this, because this is in our nature. That we're going to prove our lives, we're going to get our lives together, we're just going to do what we do. But you see our children eventually. That's, that's our mindset. A lot of people don't understand that, because they don't understand the nature of, we're we going we to get our lives together. A lot of men think like that. But he's a deadbeat man when he walks away from abuse. But when a woman walks away from abuse, it's like, oh, you're so strong, you're this. But when a man does it, you're, you're a deadbeat. It's sad. And we don't have enough men that are speaking up. We don't have enough men that are standing up. There's, there's men that need to tell their stories. You gotta tell your story. It ain't about even making somebody else look bad, but I feel like there's been such a negative connotation between men just speaking up now that we feel like we, our voice just don't matter because we've grown up so much, the black man's voice have, have, have never been heard. I mean, the black man has been swept under the bus since the 1960s. Ever since the civil rights movement had been hijacked by feminism and homosexuality. Ever since then, the black man has been cared, cared, not cared about. And our children need to see men leading. We need to see women gracefully submitting. Not submitting out of like, oh, I gotta submit. Like, no, if that's her mindset, then she ain't no wife for you, dog. You can't force somebody to submit. And you can't even judge her for that. You can't, you can't just judge somebody for their mindset. You just gotta understand what you want and stand firm on that. And don't let nobody shame you or make you feel, oh, you're insecure, you're this and that, you know? So ultimately, what do you want for your children? That's the biggest thing. And you as a man that's leading, what kind, of, what kind of children do you want to raise? Because you are the head of your family, man. The nuclear family structure is on you. You are the pillar of the family. If you're this true man. But. Yo, I truly hope this message blessed you. Um, I know there may be some misunderstandings in what I'm saying, but I hope that you truly get my heart and my love and desire to see more nuclear families come about. Because I'm telling you, that's what's going to save a community. Our community with all these single parent households ain't doing it. And we see already. But you'll, con you'll continue to see. Watch. But. If you got a good man or woman, hold on to them. Marry them. <laughs> but, hey, may the most high bless you in Yahushua name. Woo -woo.